Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you recall, in the last session, we had actually been discussing and we had completed our discussion on international trade and international marketing with the context of consumer behavior across cultures. And then, once we had finished that, we had started our discussion on consumer behavior and uh, their special influence, which comes from the diffusion process uh, in terms of the product or the adoption process in terms of how the market adopts the product. Keeping this context in mind, before we move into in detail to look at the diffusion process or the consumer influence of the opinion leadership or opinion leaders, we'll quickly take a look at what we had done in terms of the international business and international marketing and the cross-cultural behavior so that we are very clear because now the question is not just uh, whether we should enter the market or international markets, but the question that we are faced with is how should we do it? But to be able to give a good answer on it, how to be able to do it, we should be aware of the different concepts and cultural uh, theories which are coming up at this point of time. One of them is that cultures are converging, which means that it is simpler to launch an international brand. But on the other hand, there is a lot of uh, uh, discussion on the fact that cultures are actually diverging, which requires international companies or multinational companies who are interested in uh, entering new markets to be very clear as to what uh, is common and what is diverging within the cultural context. We have had a lot of discussion on this and we had already talked about the internationalization process which has been speeded up because of the requirements or the introduction of internet. Uh, a lot of information flow is taking place which has tended to bring a lot of convergence and that is why we find questions like, should PNG, when it's launching its uh, shampoo, should it use the same product, same packaging, same uh, media advertising, same model to launch it, or should they adopt a different one? While discussing this, if you recall, I had been uh, explaining to you that under certain conditions, when the act of buying or purchase behavior is the same, the motivation might be different. And I gave you an example that in, uh, in the Western world, drinking uh, mineral water is becoming the norm. 70 to 80% of the population normally drinks um, mineral water. However, the motivation in France, as has been researched, uh, on the drinking of mineral water focuses on the issue of hygiene, which suggests that people in France drink mineral water only because they believe that the top tap water is not hygienic. But on the other hand, in Germany, for example, we do understand uh, and the research suggests that those people who drink mineral water in Germany most probably are motivated by the concept of vegetarianism. Therefore, we need to be very clear uh, not only on what is required, what is different in the cultures, but also the motives behind uh, uh, the cultural preferences for a particular product. And in that, I'd also given you an example of uh, going to various countries and seeing what is relevant and not acceptable, or what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in the cultural context. Having done that, we had also uh, looked at a few strategies in terms of the global marketing strategies or proposal strategies and also the concept of the world brands. Now, we have uh, uh, logically uh, for deciding whether uh, what kind of strategies should be used and there are words like global globalization or glocalization, which means even though we believe that the product is global, but we tend to adapt the product and its requirements to the local in, uh, uh, system. This, comes, this has given a new context to the 
concept of globalization. But globalization normally suggests that either the needs and the wants or the desired products, uh, the requirements have converged uh, among all the people and therefore there are advantages. If you are interested, for example, in economies of scale, then uh, a global brand or a global product might be the logical answer. But if you want to uh, you know, typically uh, adapt the product for the environment, then you might like to go for a separate strategy which requires that you develop brands which are located in the context of the country. And we can see that a number of places we have seen that. Uh, watch the, uh, the, the advertisement that is uh, for Tagore, and you will find that within the context of the Indo-Pakistan, we find Shah Rukh Khan promoting that product. But if you go to the Western world, that product used to be promoted by um, uh, Tiger Woods, as a matter of fact. So we find that we change the media strategies as we go along. Uh, this is also very typical and very true that we, before we try and come to this conclusion, we need to know whether uh, the, the industry or that business has really become global. And this global context or global, uh, what do you call, concept, I've seen is, is not being really interpreted properly. Sometimes globalization just means that uh, companies have become international, international in their, uh, what do you call, um, operations. That is not really the concept of globalization. Globalization typically in terms of business means a globalization of the production processes and marketing processes, whereas a globalization within the context of the consumer would suggest that it is convergence in the wants of the people. And or we can say that if that is not true, then is McDonald a global company? Uh, are they global in their product orientation, but then we see the kind of products that they have uh, located in terms of Pakistan or in India, what we see is that there is specifically different products. Uh, though their procedures and their processes remain the same, uh, they are using the same processes across all the world, but the products that they are selling and the way they are selling those products obviously are targeted to the local environment. So before we come to this conclusion as to should we have a national brand, should we have uh, independent local brands, we need to be very cognizant of the fact that there are too many things that we have to think about and particularly seeing where there are commonalities among the various cultures that we have. And for that purpose of understanding the rationale of cultures and their impacts, we have already had a lengthy lectures on that framework. Now, to give various examples in the system, we need to know that multinational firms basically try to include, if they want to go national, what they do is that they tend to use an imagery which will give a universal meaning. So they are very strong on imagery. We have already suggested, I gave you an example of Philip Patek. This is a watch. A jewelry watch as a matter of fact and the ad that they have developed uses the same model the same sentences everything but the language is changed uh, which means that the image portrayal uh, is universally understandable and it is the same way that companies tend to look at the market and come to a conclusion on that to understand really uh, these concepts that I'm trying to bring out in terms of the various types of uh, uh, advertisements that these major multinational companies do, uh, I don't think it will be a bad idea. Rather, I would suggest that it's a good idea if you were to visit uh, these uh, companies' websites uh, targeted in various countries. For example, you can visit Coca-Cola uh, in China. Uh, they have a page for China. They most probably will have a page in India. They will also have a page for Pakistan, and you can look at it. You can see IKEA, which is a furniture manufacturer. I've already discussed uh, about that company, and so on and so forth, including PNG and Lever Brothers. If you just went around uh, to the websites of these companies uh, to check out as to what and what are they suggesting, what are they uh, producing, what are they selling in those countries and how are they selling, you should be able to differentiate 
and understand the logic of what I'm trying to bring out here. Now, having had discussed this, what we have done is uh, we started discussing the concept of consumer influences or consumer behavior and its influence, which normally comes from the concept that we have talked about, opinion leadership. And to be able to do that, if you recall, we had discussed the issue of credibility of a message. Now, in that discussion, when we were talking about advertisements and their impacts on behaviors, we suggested that word of mouth is much stronger than any other frame of advertising communication. And for that purpose, we had started the discussion as to what is this form that can be best used. Obviously, uh, a person tells another person, but we need to be able to be very clear on the person who is telling and the other person who is receiving this information. And to differentiate between the two, we suggested that the person who is giving this information is normally the person who is the opinion leader or he is playing the role of an opinion leader and the other is actually uh, the opinion receiver. The idea behind this, and try and understand this, and this is becoming very, very significant in the marketing context, because there are a number of facilitating points in technology that are coming through where we try and suggest that word of mouth initially used to be uh, done without formal organization, but now companies, having understood the importance of this concept, have started developing it in a very formalized manner. Uh, we explained that very clearly that all these opinion leadership concepts relate to non-financial benefits. Therefore, it means that the person who is giving this information and actually the credibility is uh, uh, suggestive of that comes from the point that there is no financial motive. The reason is that whenever financial motive is uh, assigned to a message, the person who is listening to this message might suggest to himself that the person who is giving this message is doing so not because of the truth, but because there is benefit to himself. On the other hand, we said that opinion leadership is a process by which informally, uncalled for or unmotivated, a person is providing information to the other regarding a product, uh, a particular purchase experience, and so on and so forth. And the logic was that these people tend to not only be credible because of the reason I've given you, but they also have the advantage that they normally do not only give positive information, they also give the negative information, which enforces the concept of credibility. Now, the way this uh, information is provided could be in the shape of an advice or can also be in the shape of an urge, asking, you know, telling the person, go ahead and buy it. The, therefore, uh, opinion leaders uh, tend to not only give information when somebody asks them, but they also try and promote the product for various reasons. We'll, we'll discuss that when we come to this point. Then we were also clear that opinion leader is very product specific. Uh, and the roles change. At a point of time, a person might be a giver of information, and another point of time, the person might be a receiver of information, and it might change from product to product or situation to situation. For example, uh, in one of the contexts, I had told you that, for example, a person buys uh, a chair or a baby chair for the car. Uh, if the person buys it, he uses it, but then what we call the post dissonance moves in. The person is not sure whether he made the right purchase. So to be able to reduce that post purchase dissonance, it is possible that he starts talking to his friends and trying to uh, explain the good points of the chair or the baby chair that he has bought. And in this form, while he is trying to reduce his post-purchase dissonance, he is actually acting as an opinion leader. So he is trying to now talk to people, give the positive information to them just to reduce his risky factors, that is to reduce his own fears or insecurity. In doing this, obviously the role has changed. This is where the opinion leader's dynamic uh, uh, framework moves into position. And we should recognize the fact 
that it is dynamic in the sense that in one case, and you most probably in your own environment when you are with your friends and so on and so forth, you will see that for a particular product, people will ask a particular person because they believe he is an expert in that area, not only on the basis of his knowledge, but because of his experience in that framework. But for a different product, people, including him, might go and ask the same question of other people. Therefore, there is this uh, changing framework. Now this, as we will discuss later, creates a problem for the marketers because they know the significance of this person or this process of leadership, opinion leadership, but they do not know how to recognize this person for their product. And that is what starts creating the issues that we will be discussing in terms of trying to locate this uh, opinion leader for a product specific uh, uh, actions. And within, when, while we are doing this, we will also try and look at uh, certain other changed concepts which have moved in. Uh, for example, an opinion leader uh, is very product specific, but a new category of uh, person or persons have moved in who we call the market mavens. Now these market mavens are people who do not relate to any one single product, but they are very journalized in their uh, approach to various products. And most of the characteristics are the same. The only major difference comes into position that they do not just talk about or they are not an expert in any one single area. They tend to relate to a number of products and number of markets and they are enthusiastic in uh, pushing for that because they are themselves very aggressive shoppers. So they shop quite a lot and instead of shopping passively, they try and shop for bargains, which basically means that they look for value and they try and use that concept of bargaining to be an aggressive shopper, while as uh, the, what they call the opinion leader per se, uh, may not be an aggressive buyer. He just has an opinion. He might have used a product, but he's not that enthusiastic in the shopping context. Now, uh, having said what we have done, we should recognize the point that this process, the dynamic process of uh, opinion leadership, uh, does not come because of the need or the requirements of the opinion leader or his desire to pass information. It also serves a very important task for the, uh, the opinion uh, uh, receiver in the sense that this opinion receiver normally gets, uh, avoids risk in terms of first trying to find the product and then try it and so on and so forth, he already gets a person's opinion who's used the product, which reduces his regular uh, what do you call risk impact. Uh, and there are so many other factors, we have already gone over it. Uh, now we need to continue to the issue of, like I said, other uh, uh, aspects of this behavior of opinion leadership. There is something we call purchase polls. Now purchase polls are the people who actually go along with the buyer or the opinion receiver to the market and actually help in the purchase process. Uh, according to research, normally this behavior is seen or observed in the purchase of durable goods and not grocery. Logic is also that mostly men go or take their uh, friends or purchase Pauls as they be call it or purchase friends as we call them they take them to uh, actually discuss the characteristics or the specific product information or related to the most important retail outlets. Whereas in the case of women, research suggests that these women normally take other friends as moral support because they already have an idea, but in terms of moral support they need uh, when they are discussing the issue with the um, retailer or the seller, then the friends can support this behavior. So purely, it is not only from the point of view of uh, giving information or receiving information, is also trying to assist in uh, the process of purchase. Now the other type of thing which is not only developed because of the environmental circumstances, this is what we call surrogate buyers. Most probably we have not observed that in the context of Pakistan, but slowly it is becoming quite normal. And one 
area that reflects this behavior moving in is what we call the event managers. Giving us an example, but normally now we have what we call consultants. They are consultants who try and create an image around the person or they advise the person how to dress up, what to wear, when to wear, and so on and so forth. So they are more closely related to the new concept that we have started seeing in Pakistan, which is basically uh, the event management. If you recall, previously, um, marriages used to be arranged solely and purely by the uh, family itself. So they used to decide what to have, where to have, uh, how to arrange the settings, how is the dinner table to be laid down, or whatever is the, uh, the, the way the whole program will run. Over a period of time, this system has shifted to experts uh, who take the responsibility and they make all the necessary arrangements. Obviously, the payment is this time made by the, the person who uses that facility. So responsibility of the consultant is very high in relation to the person who is seeking that information. But they are not, and whatever is laid down in that uh, is considered to be uh, their own choice based on their experience and their expertise in applying the products. Obviously, logic might suggest to us that we use these methods, or we can use these methods, the marketers can use these methods to promote their product because they can have those products positioned into the system. But the person who is making the payment, who is accepting this expertise, normally tends to use them based on their image or their reputation. Uh, internationally now, Basically, big companies normally have uh, advisors in terms of the PRs, and PR not only relates to just improving the person's imagery, but they also tend to apply it to the kind of product which will be used. Now, remember this, the difference between an opinion leader or the consultant is that in one case, the relationship is formal, which is the consultant or the surrogate buyer, or the friend or the opinion leader where it is normally informal. Now, keep in mind that these differences that I'm explaining to you are important in trying to differentiate between the two behaviors. In one case, like I said, payment is due. In the other, it is totally informal, uh, no financial requirement. But keep in mind that this financial aspect relates to the relationship between the user of that information, which is the person who is seeking this consultancy, and not the company which is supposed to be marketing the product, because there is no relationship on that ground. And this uh, informal kind of relationship is dependent on a lot of capability of the person or the image that the person has achieved. And you can see that in a number of cases where uh, the designers normally tend to provide the movie stars or celebrities particular kind of uh, dresses uh, for any particular function, and that in that context, they are acting as uh, a kind of a surrogate buyer because then they link up all the things, including the dress, the watch, the shoe, everything to configure, including the pen that they normally carry in the pocket. Uh, that way, we should also recognize that consultants are very few. On the other hand, you can find many opinion leaders, and that is various uh, factors that exist in the system. Social activity is the norm for opinion leader and not the surrogate buyer. Now, as the surrogate buyer comes into position, we also recognize that the setting is, like I said, is formal against uh, informal, but the liability of this consultant is very high in terms of the purchases that he makes or the person who is advised makes these purchases. Now, given this, we go back to the concept of the market mavens. Again, like I told you, that they are opinion leaders, but they are related to a number of other products and markets. So that is the issue that we have. There are two major differences that we must recognize. The market maven relates to products which are numerous and therefore not significantly the new product that is in the market. Whereas an opinion leader is normally used for the purposes of 
providing information about a new product. Also remember that the opinion leader, as related to Market Maven, they are more fashion oriented. They, they are more fashion conscious as against the Market Maven because since they are related to a number of products, therefore they cannot be focused onto one significant area, whereas uh, the Market Mavens are less fashion conscious but more aggressive in purchasing. The problem, like I told you, is how to identify, how to find these people, and that is the major issue that our marketers find. Now, obviously, for the purpose of that, we need to go and look at the profile that is normally provided. And if we know the profile, then we can try and investigate or carry out market research in the market to find that particular group of person to use to spread the word of mouth. And this will then bring us to the next context of how the latest technologies that are moved in are going to be supplementing the whole process of this opinion leader. Now, if we look at it, we should not forget the opportunity that normally is provided by these technologies that we have. Just to mention a few, we will talk about it later. Twitter, for example, has become a very strong method to spread the word of mouth. You will also see this Twitter. Normally, if you go to these websites, you can always see a symbol which says, follow us on the Twitter, which is basically what marketers are trying to cash on this uh, social networking concept. However, let, leaving that aside as we will go on to it, we should look at what is the basic profile of this opinion leader. Now, opinion leader can have two types of profiles that we have. One is the, his journal characteristics, and the other basically are his product-specific characteristics. For that, we will look at the slide to know the exact relationship between that. Now, in terms of the general frame, as you can see, these people are more innovative. Innovative means that they would like to try new products. And I've already classified this to you, that an opinion leader who is product specific will differ from the market maven who is very generalized. So in terms of the market maven, they are not that innovative. Whereas uh, the, the opinion leader is innovative. The second point that we can see is they are willing to talk. That means they are very easily accessible they are also not shy in discussing things about the product that they are talking about. They tend to give information as much as they can. This obviously reflects a very strong confidence in their own being, which is self-confident. They are self-confident. They tend to believe in themselves, and because they believe in their ability, they are more convincing when they talk to other people. Now, the fourth point of we have is that they are gregarious, which means they are kind of social animal who moves around parties, they attend a number of gatherings, they do not shy away from this gathering aspects. Then they also have the ability to think differently. So they have this cognitive differentiation capability. So these are the factors which generally identify opinion leader. On the other side, we know that there are some product specific areas that we should be able to recognize to be able to find opinion leader in a particular product sector. We need to do that. Now that category is defined by the interest they have in the product. Obviously the person who has got an interest in the product would be more appropriate in acquiring knowledge and also providing knowledge. Therefore, while they are interested in the product, they also seek knowledge, rapid knowledge, in terms of any new product or brand that has come into that category. For that purpose, they always visit uh, special interest medias, journals, they read magazines, they read specific magazines which relate to uh, their product of interest. So as we have seen, the first point that will help profile the uh, opinion leader in terms of product category is their interest, then it is their knowledge regarding that specific area. And obviously, 
that will lead to the fact that they are interested in specific media. Further, they normally have the same age in the sense that these people would be or belong to the age or age group which is normally used by the uh, opinion seekers. So opinion seeker ka jo age group hai, wohi inke bhi age group se uska link hoga. Ye nahi ho sakta ki opinion leader would normally tend to be a very oldish person uh, with regard to the use of a particular fashion product. Okay, so we, we find that that is another uh, particular aspect. Fifth, they normally belong to the same social status. Obviously, because they have to move through the same party circle, the same group circles, so they will tend to belong to the same social status. Finally, these people do not only belong to that particular social circle, but they tend to cross over and they have a lot of exposure in terms of other social aspects of life and other social classes. So they interact with them. This provides them a very strong knowledge base which is related to the product category. So quickly, if we go over uh, the profiles that have been developed, and again, remember, the problem that we are identifying is that we know the importance of this opinion leadership process. We recognize the fact that this word of mouth framework is very significant for marketers to exploit in their uh, uh, marketing areas. However, the problem is the how to find them where to find them. Uh, and that is why, if you recall one of the earlier lectures where we were talking about uh, the new concept or frameworks that have moved in in terms of which model to use, and the suggestion has been that if you use very beautiful kind of models, uh, people have started having problems with credibility because normally when a person uses uh, let's say uh, a computer or a person uses uh, a, some kind of a refrigerator, then it might be the, the house lady or housewife who is the normal person and not such a, a fantastic or a very pretty model. She might be able to do a better job than the uh, other person. And the same case is in terms of the kind of people who use computers. Now, that is the reason why we emphasize on the research to identify who would be the normal person to depict the opinion leadership. And like I said, uh, we need to recognize that these are the two major categories. One is the journalized frame where you can identify his general characteristics, but then to be able to find this person for a particular product, you need to understand the, cons uh, the contradictions that we have given, like the interest, the knowledge, uh, his special interest media, in the media that is targeted towards that particular product. They are from the same age group, normally having the same social status, but obviously they cross over to other areas also, which gives them this idea. Now, like I said, how do we go about it? So profile is known. The next step would be to carry out research. Now research is a factor that we have discussed extensively at the beginning of the uh, sessions where we talked about survey uh, method of uh, finding uh, data or we discussed interviews and opinion uh, or what you call the focus groups and so on and so forth and therefore there is a method that we have been able to conclude on uh, which includes about three or four frameworks but in my opinion, the most significant are generally, which are easy to use, are two of them. One is self-mapping, which means you can ask the person directly whether you give information or you receive information. Now, in both these cases, uh, the person will be able to say, for example, if I was to look at a person uh, in the category of laptops, uh, I can ask them, uh, if you want to buy a laptop, would you ask uh, somebody's opinion or whose opinion would you like to ask? If the answer is that I will go to another person or a friend of mine, we know that this person is an opinion receiver. But if the person says, I don't have to, I read uh, the uh, information on the, in the magazine or I visit the website, we can generally uh, understand that this person 
is an opinion leader. So the second method that we have, uh, other than the self-designating method where we said that we can ask the person, uh, who, I mean, who do you influence or who influences you while you are buying the product or do you go and ask somebody about the product that you are interested in? The other is the sociometric method. Now, sociometric method basically tends to ask the person and find out which particular person do we go to when we are asking uh, about a product. So uh, can we ask the person, who told you this? Now, when you talk about that Mr. So-and-so told me about this or uh, my friend told me about this, then we are actually looking for those sociometric framework in which we are looking at the social interaction of people to get a good idea of who really is the person who one can focus to. And logic says that in a, in a targeted segment or in a sample, if uh, out of, let's say, 20 people, 12 indicate that one individual who by name or by a particular indicator, we can figure out that that particular person is the opinion leader within a particular context. Now, these two are considered to be uh, more uh, significant and also more reliable in trying to uh, give us this uh, framework. The other methods that we have are, one is called key informant method. Now, key informant method normally relates to a question that we can ask generally. Key informant basically means one person is trying to explain who they believe uh, are considered to be uh, opinion leaders. So rather than asking a direct question about who do you go to or who do you ask, we now ask that in their opinion, uh, in their social class or social setup, who do they consider is an opinion leader? Uh, irrespective of the product, it is just a journalized question. And according to information, it is not that reliable. Finally, we have the objective method. A very simple example that I will give you to finish this uh, our discussion is that if you ask a person, have you used the product or have you bought the product? Logic says that if the person has bought the product, then this person most probably is the innovator that we talked about uh, when we were defining the profile, uh, other than a person who has not bought the product. But the problem also becomes uh, in terms of uh, if three or four people have bought the product. The second method to clear that issue is to ask when did they buy the product? Last week, one week before, two months before, a year before, to try and set a timeline because we have already suggested that people who are innovative will tend to buy the product earlier and by the factor of their being first in purchase behavior, they normally would be people who would tend to be the opinion leaders. Uh, this more or less comes to, the, to, to bring us to the point where we have finished our discussion around the concept of the word of mouth influence through the opinion leadership process. And, but we should not forget that this links up uh, with our basic discussion regarding the advertising phenomena that we discussed, where we uh, created this point that media what is the, which is the most effective frame in, in influencing the consumer. And in that, we had talked about word of mouth. Now we are more clearer on the issue that word of mouth basically is fostered and promoted through the context of individuals who we call the opinion leaders. And the product process is what we call dynamic process of opinion leadership. Having talked about this, we now need to look at a few implications and we should see also how these things are now evolving and how the word of mouth is being pushed through by marketers uh, within the context of uh, creating opinions. Now, the first step in this process is that nowadays companies try to produce those products which has buzz potential. Now, Buzz potential is something that people like to talk about. 
we, we have seen this. I mean, we can observe this uh, very practically in the movie business area, uh, since movie business is also a product uh, and it's also a, a product that is sold. We see this normally happening. Uh, previews take place, uh, you know, a few slides are shown, something very significant about the, what do you call the, uh, the way the picture has been produced or how the animation has taken place. All these are things that tend to create buzzwords. Uh, when the buzzwords are used, people become interested and the more interest that you generate, the faster is the diffusion of information regarding the product. And that is the logic of uh, the opinion leadership uh, formation because like we said, uh, the process of purchase is awareness creation and then guidance to the purchase system. So in the first instant, information has to be provided and has to be diffused in the market before significant purchases take place. So the first factor uh, which the marketers tend to do is to create awareness. And like I said, one form of creating awareness is to introduce a product or some feature that will become the talk of the town, uh, as we say. So, log uske upar ya uske mutalik baat zyada karenge, jab baat zyada karenge to usme interest create hoga aur ye cheeze hum dekhte hain, humne har jagah pe dekha ke jab bhi koi nai cheez to hum usko sensationalize karte hain, usme sansini paida karte hain to wo cheez jo hai, badi tezi ke saath phailti hai. Given jo aaj kal ka zamana, we have already discussed it quite often, ke internet ke zamane mein jab ke media badi tezi se information pochata hai to usme any company jo piche reh jaye is information flow mein to wo zarur lose karti hai market is hawale se let me suggest to you that if you can uh, visit two websites to check out what is this buzz framework to ek website hai www.buzzagent Okay, buzz agent, which is spelled like B U Z Z A G E N T dot com. So I'll repeat again. It is www dot B U Z Z A G E N T dot com. Now this is one. To give you a further idea, P and G ne bhi apna ek ye buzz shuru kiya hai, jiska naam hai www tremor dot com. Tremor is T R E mor.com और ये जो बस क्या नाम है उन्होंने जो किया है उसका मकसद सिर्फ टीन एज मार्केट को अट्रैक्ट करने के लिए है और अगर आप देखें तो आपने देखा होगा आजकल बहुत से रियलिटी शोज जो हैं वो बहुत पॉपुलर हो रहे हैं बिकॉज़ दे काइंड ऑफ क्रिएट सेंसेशंस और रियलिटी शोज में जो सेंसेशनलिज्म है अब कंपनीज जो हैं उनको भी इस्तेमाल करती हैं अपनी product positioning ke liye aur humne jaise maine aapko pehle bhi kaha ek aur format jo ab bada popular hota ja raha hai wo aap dekhte hain facebook youtube aur ab twitter twitter has now become a very strong blogging frame in which people tend to post their opinions very rapidly ab cheez sirf ye reh jati hai ki ye jo marketers hain वो कैसे ये इंफॉर्मेशन जनरेट करें इसमें जो एक वार्निंग पॉइंट है वो पर्टिकुलरली बहुत क्लियर होना चाहिए क्योंकि इस पे आपका कंट्रोल बहुत कम है जब मार्केटर का कंट्रोल कम हो तो उसमें रिस्कीनेस बढ़ जाती है बिकॉज़ अगर उस प्रोडक्ट की कोई भी छोटी कमजोरी नजर आए और उसको ये लोग अगर वो तेजी के साथ एक्सपोज होनी शुरू हो जाए तो कंपनी नुकसान उठाएगी एक बहुत अच्छी एग्जांपल है कि जहां एक बाइसिकल मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कंपनी का एक छोटा सा इशू जो था वो सात महीने में उस कंपनी को उन्होंने दस मिलियन डॉलर का नुकसान पहुंचाया जस्ट बिकॉज़ ब्लॉगिंग इतनी तेजी के साथ इतनी रैपिडली हुई उस प्रोडक्ट की उस छोटी सी कमजोरी के बेस के ऊपर कि उसका इम्पैक्ट बेअंतहा हुआ ऑन दी अदर साइड कंपनीज विच आर मोर अवेयर of these issues and who ye jo companies jo track karti hain in blogs ko bhi aur that is logical ki agar aap twitter ko istemal kar rahe hain ya koi blogging system istemal kar rahe hain to aapke paas ek formalized system hona chahiye jo regularly 
इन ब्लॉग्स को और इन में जो भी इंफॉर्मेशन फ्लो कर रही है उसको चेक रखें कि अगर कोई उसमें कोई ऐसा इशू नजर आता है जिसके लिए रिस्पॉन्स बड़ी रैपिड होना चाहिए तो उसको रैपिडली रिस्पॉन्ड करना चाहिए कीप इन दीज टू पॉइंट्स इन माइंड वी शुड रिकग्नाइज द फैक्ट दैट दीज न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज हैव एक्चुअली ब्रॉट इन अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग पेस टू दिस वर्ड ऑफ माउथ ट्रांसफरिंग अराउंड द वर्ल्ड और इसका जो जो बेनिफिट है जितना बेनिफिट है उतना उसका नुकसान भी हो सकता है सो कीपिंग दीज टू पॉइंट्स इन माइंड वी शुड बी वेरी केयरफुल इन द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दीज न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज अब वेन वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द इशू ऑफ दीज टेक्नोलॉजीज एंड देयर वट कॉल इन्फ्लुएंस इन कंज्यूमर बिहेवियर इन टर्म्स ऑफ वर्ड ऑफ माउथ वी शुड नाउ मूव ऑन टू द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डिफ्यूजन मकसद जो वो है जो मैं ये ये जो दो बहुत ज़रूरी कॉन्सेप्ट जो सबसे आखिर के लिए रखे हुए हैं उनका लिंक है अवेयरनेस के क्रिएशन के साथ और अगर आपको याद होगा तो प्रोडक्ट लाइफ साइकिल का जो कॉन्सेप्ट है वो भी इसमें डायरेक्टली इन्वॉल्व है इशू जो है वो ये है कि हमें ये पता होना चाहिए कि एक प्रोडक्ट जो है वो मार्केट में फैलता कैसे है विच मीन्स कि अगर कोई प्रोडक्ट आए तो वो मार्केट में जब उसकी एंट्री होती है तो वो किस तेज़ी के साथ डिफ्यूज होता है डिफ्यूज का वर्ड का मतलब ही ये है कि वो किस तेजी के साथ मार्केट में उसका उस वो बिकता है फैलता है और लोग उसको अडॉप्ट करते हैं तो इन दिस कॉन्टेक्स वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट टू डिस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट द फर्स्ट वन इज द प्रोडक्ट डिफ्यूजन प्रोसेस एंड द सेकेंड वन इज द प्रोडक्ट अडोप्शन प्रोसेस वी विल टॉक अबाउट दीज टू सेपरेटली लेकिन इसके जो कॉन्सेप्चुअल फ्रेम है पहले हम थोड़ा सा उसके ऊपर बात कर लेते हैं सो दैट व्हेन वी आर इनटू दिस मॉडल्स पर्टिकुलरली दी टू मॉडल्स दैट वी विल बी टॉकिंग ऑफ वी आर वेरी क्लियर ऑफ द सिग्निफिकेंस अब जस्ट टू स्टेप बैक अगेन वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट द यूज ऑफ ट्विटर एंड ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ थिंग्स ओपिनियन लीडर मकसद क्या है अगर हम देखें कंज्यूमर बिहेवियर के फ्रेम में तो हमने कहा था कि नीड रिकग्निशन होती है इंडिविजुअल uh, में या प्रॉब्लम आइडेंटिफिकेशन होती है उसके बाद अवेयरनेस होती है कि ये प्रोडक्ट कहीं ना कहीं अवेलेबल होगा फिर इंफॉर्मेशन सर्च होगी इंफॉर्मेशन सर्च के बाद ट्रायल होगा ट्रायल के बाद आप एक किस्म का डिसीजन लेंगे और उसके बाद पोस्ट परचेज बिहेवियर आ जाता है तो अगर मैं इस पूरे को देखूं तो उसमें एक फ्रेम जो बिहेवियर का क्रिटिकल पॉइंट है वो है अवेयरनेस क्रिएट होना अगर अवेयरनेस ही नहीं है तो प्रोडक्ट का बिकना इज नॉट अ पॉसिबिलिटी keep in these two points in mind we need to recognize ke ye jo diffusion process ka hawala hai usme ek hame ye dekhna hoga ke diffusion jis tezi ke sath hogi uska taluq product ke uh, yani uski information ka aware hona market mein wo lazim hoga uh, again to try and explain it a little bit more kehne ka maqsad ye hai ke agar ek product ne market mein tezi se diffuse hona hai या मार्केटर ये चाहता है कि वो प्रोडक्ट को मार्केट में तेजी से डिफ्यूज करे कंपटीशन से पहले और मकसद भी यही होता है कि आप कंपटीशन से पहले उस प्रोडक्ट को अच्छी तरह मार्केट में फैला दें सो दैट कंपेटिटर को जगह ना मिले लेकिन वो उसी वक्त मुमकिन है कि जब मार्केट इस चीज़ की उसके अंदर अवेयरनेस आ जाए कि दिस प्रोडक्ट इज़ नाउ अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट फॉर द लॉजिक इज द फास्टर द अवेयरनेस इज क्रिएटेड द फास्टर वुड बी दी लॉजिक ऑफ द डिफ्यूजन प्रोसेस लेकिन उससे पहले लेट अस आस्क आर सेल्स के इनोवेशन है क्या नाउ इनोवेशन कैन बी सीन फ्रॉम टू फोर फैक्टर्स वन इज बेसिकली फ्रॉम द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द कंपनी कंपनी के लिए एक प्रोडक्ट जो है वो हो सकता है टोटली न्यू दूसरी तरफ वी हैव मार्केट के लिए नया प्रोडक्ट तीसरा प्रोडक्ट के अंदर वो एक नई कैटेगरी या उसके अंदर इनोवेशन आ रही हो Finally, we should also try and understand that technologically, us me kya jiddat hai. This is since we are discussing this. However, as I can see, the time is running short, so I will continue in the next class in trying to explain the concept of what is considered to be innovation. Because we are confused, we are confused. Many times, we see in the market that a new product has come out. So, this does not mean that this product is new. ये हो सकता है कि उस मार्केट के हवाले से ये नया प्रोडक्ट हो सो वी कैन नॉट कंफ्यूज दैट सेम इज द केस विद अ मार्केटिंग कंपनी 
ایک کمپنی اگر نیا پروڈکٹ لے کر آتی ہے تو اس کمپنی کے حوالے سے تو وہ پروڈکٹ نیا ہو سکتا ہے بٹ اٹ از ناٹ نیسیسری دیٹ پیپل اور دا مارکیٹ ریکگنائز اٹ ایز این انوویشن سو بفور وی کین فردر پروسیڈ ود دی لاجک آف دی ڈیفیوژن پروسیس ہاؤ دی پروڈکٹ ول اسپریڈ ان دا مارکیٹ اور ہاؤ اٹ ول بی اڈاپٹیڈ بائی دی مارکیٹ اٹ سیلف وی نیڈ ٹو بی ویری کلیئر آن دس ہول تھنگ بفور آئی کوکلی وائنڈ اپ Uh, let me recapitulate a few points that we have made. Uh, recognize that we have finished the discussion on the opinion leader as, or the process of opinion leadership as a very potent format for spreading information. Uh, the reason why it is significant is its credibility. Credibility comes from a number of reasons, but it is purely the credibility which makes it very, very significant. And since we have technological support, this has be now become a very potent framework and technologically it is being supported everywhere. Having said that, we are also recognizing the fact that awareness create karne ka taluk market ke andar product ke phelne se hai. Ke kis speed se market us product ko adopt karegi. Uh, to be able to do that, we need to be very clear as to what is innovation itself and then follow through to the point of where we can say, how does it get diffused and how does the market adopt the product with this uh, i conclude the, today's lecture and like i said next time we will pick up the product uh, the system uh, in our discussion on the diffusion process as well as the adoption process thank you very much and allah hafiz